Hello guys, it's me, Buffalo Staple. I decided to do an interview, like an actual genuine interview and not like a skit, like a logic XXX interview, like joke thing. Nah, this is for an artist uh, named DJNB who hails from Sacramento. He's a drum and bass producer. I've been following him for quite a while. You know, he's on his third studio album. Now he just released album number three. It's titled In the Tranquil Landscape. You can stream it on Spotify, Apple Music, uh, Tidal, Deezer, and whatever the fuck you, you want to you stream it on. It's available everywhere. SoundCloud, you can get it there too. Yeah, it's pretty. It's a pretty ambitious, unique album for the genre. And I was pretty perplexed by it, and we both agreed to be a really cool idea if I just maybe gave him like a little bit of an outlet for him to just sort of discuss and explain and describe his creative process behind making this album, and that's what he is here to do today on my channel. And yeah, this is an interview that we we carried out, and uh, I think it went pretty well. So yeah. Without further ado, let's begin the interview. Thank you for watching. See you later. Hello, everyone. I am Buffalo Staple, and I'm going to be interviewing uh, a, a producer by the name of DJ NB or Nolan Baldwin. Thank you for coming on. I appreciate it. Glad to be here. Absolutely. I, I interviewed yep. Logic, XXX Tentacion, and now the next the next man up, <laughs> Nolan Baldwin. You know, he's yep. going to keep climbing. You just need to get Kanye West yeah, just... and then the bucket list is done. Exactly, exactly. But yeah, so Nolan here has just recently released a, a brand new album, a full-length LP titled In the Tranquil Landscape. Uh, he's a drum and bass producer. And uh, the first question I want to ask you uh, is actually mm -hmm. related to your Instagram post where you were essentially promoting the album. You said that this was the album that you always wanted to make or something along those lines. And I was interested in that yeah. because... Okay, so 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 you would say that you said since you started producing drum and bass music, this is sort of the place you wanted to get to. This was essentially the vision that I guess you had in mind at first. Would you say, like this was sort of pretty much? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, when I first when I first started producing, I didn't really have much in mind as far as goals. Really, mm. just like just making what I wanted to make. But I think this, like around this time, it's pretty much where I nailed it. Where I really made something that I set out to make and something that I'm really proud. Of. Awesome. That's good to hear. That's good to hear. Congratulations that you, you made it, man. You made it to this point. That's, that's good. That's good. Uh, but yeah, I think I think for me, though, the most attention-grabbing aspect of this particular album has got to be that final track being so ambitiously lengthy. It's 20 minutes long. So I can only imagine that... Yeah, that's something I've wanted. What? Sorry, so, say that again, sorry? Yeah, that is something that I really wanted to do, making it... Like a huge, ambitious, like, opus of a song type thing. Yeah. yeah cool is there um, any particular I mean, reason for that is it sort of like something you see as like a like a challenge it's like a daunting undertaking like to push your boundaries was that sort of the idea behind it to like enter a new territory um surprisingly not really I actually um i made the first 10 songs and it was like maybe 40 minutes yeah and then i made a bunch of other smaller songs that were just like a couple minutes so really it doesn't really seem to me like just one cohesive song sure. it seems more like a bunch of vignettes just kind of right. sewn together. That, that explains, I guess, uh, on the Spotify track listing, I see it's like all divided into like different phases. And on SoundCloud, it's like all bunched in for like that one track. But um, yeah, yeah, I think your use of sampling all over, all over the album is really interesting because you, you quite often incorporate like well-known sample, like the Kanye one with the interview. Like that's pretty recognizable. And you have like little vocal samples like yeah. at the beginning of certain songs. And uh, and I, I I remember you mentioning something about like how Sacramento, where you're from, is a bit dangerous. Um, would you consider your albums like 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 in regards to, like crime and stuff? I think you were mentioning something about that. Uh, would you say your albums kind of reflect that? In something a sense? about what? Like you, you were talking about how Sacramento at one point a while ago, uh, you mentioned how Sacramento is quite can be quite dangerous. Is that correct? Well, like, there's a bit of crime. Um, I guess it depends on where you're at. Sure, I mean, yeah. where I'm at right now is not like extremely dangerous yeah. but i mean it can be but it, i mean it really just depends on where you're at I sure, guess. Sure. like there there are parts like in it really seems like the more north you go the better it is but the more south you go the worse I it see. is but i mean like pretty much where i've lived in sacramento my whole life it hasn't been bad at all right but like, sure if you go more south like the del paso heights area it gets pretty bad. gotcha i see that, that's pretty fortunate so you so you wouldn't say like uh, there's been like some sort of crazy dangerous experience you've had that's been like a, that your album sort of reflects or like there's some would you say your album reflects i guess the danger um, of sacramento in any way because i do think i do get kind of like a dark grimy feel from some of the tracks 
I'm not sure if yeah, that was really an idea you had in mind at all, but yeah, continue. Yeah, it is like reflecting that sort of like grimy streets because I mean I haven't personally experienced that, but like yeah, I know what it's like. I know people who have experienced that, so it, right. it is like reflecting like the dark kind of streets, I guess. Like kind of like how drill music in Chicago yeah, reflects, sure, sure. you know, the grimy Chicago. I see. In some respects, a lot of songs, especially like I think the first uh, vignette of Dimension of Hungry Ghosts, mm -hmm. I think that song really does like reflect like the sure. grimy streets but yeah i see well would you say that i mean so if that is in some regard an, an influence a notable influence on certain songs uh, are there any like certain Definitely, musicians yeah. that you would consider influential towards this album that you can list off yeah um i think one of my biggest influences and i i boast this one pretty heavily especially mm -hmm. on Nock screw yeah. he really has of course, influenced yeah. my music absolutely yeah wonderful yes yeah, i think that's notable as well all recognizable at least yeah and then a lot of like 90s drum and bass artists mm. really did influence me all which are i think are like from your area sure yeah uk like, is know, pretty big drum and bass is huge here. yeah garage and all that yeah everything. exactly yeah um yeah you know everyone on the moving shadow label especially like that is where actually I, where i started like getting into drum and bass like right aqua sky and you know, i started getting into them and then that brought to all the you know popular drum and bass artists but okay yeah like a lot of the uk drum and bass really did inspire me a lot sure and sure. like i think i toted that inspiration too heavily <laughs> on my earlier albums like um, oh, okay the void listens back really like all of it is made up of mishmash different 90s drum and bass mashing all together yeah. it's kind of like but for drum and bass Gotcha. Yeah. You, you, would you say you've carved out sort of a more distinct identity with the new album for yourself? Yeah, definitely. I I was actually specifically trying to avoid like <laughs> mishmashing singles. Like I still went through my usual process of making drum bass, but I tried to incorporate more like actual, you know, like crafting melodies because I was just sure. focused more with just making what sounds good to hear and taking all my influence mashing it all together but yeah right i definitely think I that, there are a way sorry sorry yeah. <laughs> sorry I'll, I'll let you finish uh, but like yeah I, I was gonna say that i think there are some really creative and unique samples for sure sampling in, in particular is really unique on this album, which is which is awesome and and little things like thanks. just little personality quirks like that i think it was on the opening track there was a little skit at the end and you sort of like edited in dj envy i was like just little quirks like that give it that much more personality that sets it apart you know yeah i like to do yeah that. yeah that's great yeah for sure but yeah sorry continue i didn't mean to interrupt but yeah proceed yeah um so i found a way to be more subtle with my approach to sampling yeah taking my influence like instead of like yeah so it's kind of weird but like i've <laughs> crafted melodies myself actually my really close online friend Jar jarhead sure he, he was featured, like yeah. was there helping me like work through it because at the time of making the album i wasn't really using fl studio like i should like i would make all my sounds in fl sure i work it all in audacity i still do but right at that time i'd like familiar with really like how to work in a key yeah. but um i figured that out more but at the time i had him help me with that and like kind of work me through yeah so with this album i definitely figured out music better <laughs> wonderful that's good to hear that's good to hear um but yeah uh the single that you chose that was lust for life right and um yeah that was the sure yeah which features some quite intriguing vocal work from the feature abfash which i thought was really interesting yeah um but yeah so how many collaborations were Thanks. there in total by the way how many like features were there in total can you like, i'm struggling there was with that yeah and then jarhead he did co-production well more than he usually does mm -hmm. on unpleasant grove yeah. And it was an uncredited feature, but he did guitars on Cast as well. Oh, cool. And then my friend Busman, who also goes by a bunch of but I, he, he did vocals on uh, first track. Yeah. And yeah, that's pretty much all the features. Awesome. That's great. Speaking of, um, what's it, Kafka-esque. Okay, this is one of the questions that I was really eager to ask you. Because it's been driving me crazy. The sample, yeah. what is it? I, I recognize it. I just can't put my finger on what it is in the song. The sample. It is from Malcolm. From what? Sorry, say, wait, say that again. Say that again. 
Malcolm in the Middle, the TV show. Oh my it's god, dude! Thank you. That was driving me crazy. <laughs> that was driving me so crazy. Yeah, it was, <laughs> I forgot. I have the I have the exact number of the episode um, somewhere on my computer, but um, it's that episode in like the first season or second season yeah. where they go to that um, convention thing or whatever, and like all the students are doing all that stuff. Yeah, whatever, like showing off all the yeah their inventions, and then um, Reese was chased down by a bully, and then uh, or no, he was being the bully, right? So. And he was chasing down some kids, and then the kid's older brother, who was like seven feet tall, like um, sure, uh, yeah, I think like another one you mean, another one you mean. But yeah. um, yeah. But wait, wait, so so was yeah, so me. was that is that so that song is that part of like the soundtrack to the show, or like is it part um, of the... I don't know if I'd really that, but yeah, because um, it... yeah, it does uh, in some ways. Yeah, because I feel like I've heard it yeah. somewhere else as well, maybe like on like a meme or some shit, but like. I feel like it's like from something like an album that I've heard, or something. But, well, but maybe cool. not. But yeah, I, I yeah I do recognize it from that episode though. But yeah, also another question yeah. I have, just a kind of a similar question. The main mm-hmm. melody of the song Gridley, uh, CA, uh, CA or California, or because like, <laughs> I'm, I'm a, I'm a yeah, yeah, that... yeah right. The melody of that song yeah, right. really reminds me because I've been listening to this album a lot recently. Uh, uh, the song "Time to Dance" by Panic at the Disco was that at all an influence on that song? Can I... Yeah, what? I did interpolate the lead. Right, that's what uh, I thought it was. Yeah, uh, I heard that. I just heard it in the song. Yeah. I just thought I wanted to confirm that. But yeah, he's like, you kind of spun that, and I thought it was cool. But uh, I just wanted to Thanks. ask you that. Right. <laughs> yeah, that, that's cool. So, so how long have you been producing for that? So, how long has this been going on for for you? I have been. I've been producing music since I think maybe 2014 maybe late 2013 but right. i've been playing drums since 2009 so see, but okay. yeah see i i started out just making mashups like just taking songs and then like mashing them all together finding acapellas online yeah awesome and then i would just do whatever gotcha but i didn't start making drum and bass like i didn't put out my first album until 2016 right but of course i'd been working on that album for like for prior yeah i remember you said like you you said that that one took like over a year and then void this is back took you like a month or so or something like that right yeah, yeah which is crazy it's crazy yeah, yeah. That's nuts. it took me like a year yeah and then um the void what happened was um i had been working on uh the shifting shadows my first album mm-hmm. for a long time and then i didn't put it out until summer of 2016 and we were living with my whole family we were living with a bunch of other people to talk into mm-hmm. a lot of stuff happened it's really cool but yeah, yeah. so we were living with a bunch of other people and then just from that time after I put out that album in between when we that summer and when we moved into our newest house which we're currently in with uh, somewhere I think late 2016 something like that but like that whole summer I actually made the void listening back see. Wow. it's crazy and then I had some demos yeah 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 I had some demos sitting around for that album before but yeah it was crazy I just got in the zone and just crashed that's brilliant. Put it yeah, I love way. those, I guess, creative streets you have where it's just like nonstop. Just like, yeah, I know how that feels. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. I, I just get into a zone and mm-hmm. I can just do all the stuff that quickly. And I haven't really found that zone recently. But sure. yeah, it, it just kind of comes and goes. Yeah, like, it's annoying because right. yeah, from my experience with like making music and stuff, whenever you like try to make it something great, it fails. But when you just like decide to mess around, it turns out to be like the best thing you've ever made. It's really weird. You know, it's like, that's from, that's from me at least from my experience. Like whenever I just yeah. randomly just, I'm like bored and like, Hey, I'm gonna just throw some sounds together. It just happens to turn out to be like the greatest thing I've ever made. But when I like sit down, I'm like, all right, I'm going to make the greatest song ever. And then I start and what it turns out being is just like me trying too hard. And it just doesn't, that's just at least from, from my experience, but those creative streaks come. Exactly. That's exactly how it is. Yeah. <laughs> it's really, that's why I don't, that's why I don't like tell myself like, okay, today I'm going to make music for an hour. I only make music when I feel like exactly. it. Exactly. So I don't ever try and exactly. force. Yeah. Cause when you yeah, force it, nothing's going to come out of it. If you're not feeling it, you're not feeling it. It's just, and the creative streaks, they kind of come spontaneously when you do stumble across like that accidental victory of just messing around and it turning out great. Yeah, and, and that's also one of the, yeah. that's another freeing thing about not being on a label that, you know, sure. I'm not like forced to put out an album, like I have to yeah, put it out exactly, pretty soon. Exactly. Or I have and also won't make any money i can just you know, do it whenever whenever i feel like it so it's... wonderful all right well in that case then i think i think i'll end off the interview with this this last question what can we expect yeah. from the future of djmb um i 
am trying to, I don't know if it's going to be for sure or not, but at least so far it's been like this. I plan on releasing one project every month or a year, not full album per se, okay. but like one project a month. Sure. sure. Year, Are you going to so. continue working uh, with Astral Pariah? Uh, yeah, definitely. Awesome. Um, him, I'm always working with. Maybe not under Astro Pariah, yeah. but we are always working together. Wonderful. In fact, he just put out a new project where I did mixing for the first time. Oh, cool. I did vocals on one. Yeah, and I did a beat as well. Brilliant. So yeah, right. we're always working together. Wonderful. That's good to hear. Well... And then our group, um, some more projects coming soon. Um, yeah. We are also in a group with a bunch of other people from around town, Goon Squad. Oh. We're definitely putting out projects soon. I'm producing awesome. Sleazy one of the rappers in the group i'm doing production for one of his and yeah um 12 projects a month more astro Pro just i'm always working on music so that's awesome music awesome. well that's great man thank you for coming on this has been a really successful interview i think uh yeah good stuff man yeah thank you for interviewing me my pleasure man this has been great so yeah thanks for watching everyone uh this has been dj and and myself buffalo staple and uh, yeah we'll see you guys later